Okay, I've moved to the cab of the machine now, and we're going to have a look at troubleshooting the joystick and the black box. Electrical and joystick problems can be deduced from the black box and joystick with a multimeter. Most machines have the black box handy enough to the joystick that your joystick functions can be activated with one hand while holding the multimeter leads in the other. Okay, first you'll want to identify which color wires control the section that you're having trouble with in the black box. Your wiring key is shown in table 1.1 in the document titled Troubleshooting Manual on the Craig website. Well, moving on to the black box, and the box is easily identified by the big yellow sticker on it titled Craig Joystick Controls, and it also has our phone number on it if at any time you want to call our technical assistance. Inside of the black box are terminal strips, and you'll notice that there's one terminal strip that has colored wires and the rest have mostly black wires. The colored wires lead to the joystick and the rest of the wires go from the, this black box down to the valve. I'm now going to test to make sure the correct input signal is coming from the joystick. In order to do this, I'm going to test the voltage across two of the pins on the top of the terminal strip with the colored wires on it. Now I'm going to be testing the front post up function, which will require me to test the voltage across the black wire, which is our ground, and our green wire, which is the live wire for that function. So with one hand on the leads, and the other hand I'm going to fire that function on the joystick. And I'm expecting to get a reading of around 24 volts. and lo and behold I have 24.6 volts. You'll notice that this will vary a little bit but 24 is the main signal we're looking to get. So if this signal is reading 24 volts that means that we're not having any issues with the switch on the actual joystick. So now that we know that there's a signal coming into the black box we're now going to check to see if there's a signal leaving the black box. So back to table 1.1 in the troubleshooting manual and we're going to identify which wires control the function that we're having trouble with. We're going to go through the same procedure here that we did testing the voltage across the uh, input and the meter should still read 24 volts. If it does, then we've determined that everything north of the valve is functional. So now I'm going to test for the front post up function leaving the black box. So for this I consult my table 1.1 in the troubleshooting guide and it tells me to put my leads on numbers 1 and 2. So with one hand on the leads I'm going to try my function on the joystick and I'm reading 23.6 volts. So next we're going to check to see if the solenoids that are controlling the troubled valve spool section are working. So to do this, we're going to switch the meter onto the resistance scale and measure the resistance across the same pins that we tried for testing the output voltage. Now I'm expecting these to read around 47 ohms, although a variance within 3 ohms is common. The point of this test is to look for a reading that's going to be drastically different than the others. So testing the resistance across a couple of functions that we know are working good should provide us with a good comparison because 47 ohms may not be the exact number that we obtain. So I've switched my meter on to ohms and now I'm going to prod number one and number two and I'm going to see what the reading is. Now I'm reading 51, 51.1 and as I said earlier you're looking for in and around 47 ohms so I would say that this this solenoid down on the valve is working right. Now, we're going to try another one, another function that we know is working right. I'm going to try the front post down, which is numbers 3 and 4. Now for this one, I'm reading 49.9 ohms, which means that this solenoid as well is working correctly. 
So after testing the resistance across several functions and seeing if we're getting in and around 47 ohms of resistance across these, we've now determined that there isn't any issue with the solenoids on the valve either. Okay, now we're going to have a look at the float circuit. Now the float on a wing works differently than all the other functions. And it operates through a solenoid that on a hydraulic circuit that's completely independent from the valve casting. Now that being said, it is possible to troubleshoot the float so circuit in the same way as all the other functions that we've just had a look at. If you've identified that your float circuit is your troubled circuit, then we're going to want to make sure that, first off, that the wing mold board or blade is actually attached onto the push pull in machine. If the wing is not hooked onto the machine, there will not be enough weight to make the push pull fall or float. Now the first thing I'm going to try is to see whether the float light works. So there's a little red button on the actual joystick itself, and when you press the float button, this red button should light up. That indicates that the float circuit is engaged. So now that we've determined that the float light is engaged and that the circuit is indeed complete, we're now going to have a look at the input and output voltages across the terminals controlling the float circuit. So to test the joystick output and to make sure that a signal is coming from the joystick to the black box, I'm going to test across the black and the yellow wires. Now that's my ground and yellow is my live wire for float. And I'm seeing 24.2.1 volts. This means that there's a signal coming from the joystick to the black box itself. Now to test the output voltage, I'm going to check across number 17 and the green and yellow wire that's leading down to the valve. And on this I'm reading 24.1 volts, which means that I am getting a signal leaving the black box going to the float solenoid. Now we can test the resistance across the float solenoid the same way we did on the other valve sections. Now this one I'm going to expect to read 18 to 22 ohms. Now once you disengage your float button so there's no red light on the joystick and I switch my meter on to reading resistance I'm going to expect to get in the 18 to 22 ohm range. Now this one I'm reading 24.6 ohms across and that means that we're in and around the acceptable range. Now you'll also notice that there's a 2 amp fuse on the actual circuit board and this regulates the current going to the float solenoid. So if you're not getting any output signal uh, when you're testing your voltage across your output, uh, which is wire 17 in the green and yellow wire, you'll want to have a look at this fuse. If it's burnt and you go to replace it, do not replace it with anything higher than 2 amps or you risk burning up your float solenoid down on the valve itself. So if everything is working fine on the float circuit in the black box coming to the black box and leaving the box, then you're going to want to focus more on the float coil down on the actual valve itself. These can burn out and can be tested by removing the float coil from the cartridge and placing a screwdriver inside the energized coil to feel for the magnetism. If you're not feeling any magnetism at all, then chances are it's your actual float coil 